Every young rugby player that calls the Rainbow Nation home dreams of one day playing for their country. But the journey that leads to the green and gold is an arduous one, filled with many obstacles. It is an honor that befalls only a select few. Behind every wearer of the Springbok badge lies a tale of courage, commitment and sacrifice. These are the men that walked the road less traveled. Now or never. To me, I'm just grateful, I'm extremely grateful um, to be given this opportunity and um, just want to make a difference more than anything um, and obviously a, a massive honour for me and, and my family. So, they yeah, are extremely grateful and, and excited for, um, for what's to come. The 58th Springbok captain has been named, with Warren Whiteley bestowed the honour of leading the green and gold. The boy from the bluff has worked tirelessly to establish himself as the country's premier eighth man, while at the same time building his leadership credentials as captain of the Lions. Whiteley plays the game with passion and enthusiasm, the result of a love for rugby that blossomed from an early age. Started when I was six years old, a um, little school called uh, Turkey Ice uh, on the bluff and just playing barefoot, running around and, and having fun and to me uh, that's, that's why I play the game is because I love, I love this game and because of enjoyment and camaraderie and um, all those little things, uh, that's why I enjoy the sport so much. I used to coach him in junior club rugby and um, we used to arrive for games and practices and they would be there, the youngsters and Warren would be there early playing rugby. Obviously during the practice or during the games they're playing rugby and straight after they were playing rugby. So the whole day they were playing rugby. They only stopped to come in for a cold drink or something to eat um, and obviously to go home. But yes, all day long they played rugby. Whiteley Senior played a big role in nurturing his son's love of the game. Look, my dad is uh, very much like me. He's very relaxed and um, I mean he was more than anything, just proud, you know. And he's always, he's always been by my side through everything. Um, whenever I used to play, um, you know, you always get those parents who, you know, shout and scream and, and whatnot on the side of the field. And my dad was always you know, 30 or 40 meters left or right of those parents by himself, not saying a word and just watching. And after the game, I'd walk off and he'd just say, you know, did I enjoy it? Did I have fun? And well done, my boy. That's what he would say. His passion for rugby blossomed during his high school years at Glenwood, where he captained the illustrious Green Machine. That was the first time I ever captained and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Our um, first team coach, Mr. Hortop, a phenomenal coach, also a phenomenal person. He played for Natal back in the day. Um, yeah, and he was all about just enjoying it and, and having fun and the, the true spirit of, of the game, about camaraderie and brotherhood and playing for each other. So I really did learn a lot from him. He walked straight into the captaincy, chatted to him once or twice, and that was enough. Modest, unassuming, and that made it for me anyhow. Uh, he came through as an exceptional young man beyond his peers in terms of maturity and attitude and uh, he immediately struck me as somebody with a great future as a rugby player and as a person. And that was a special time for me. I really enjoyed um, my high school, um, got some fond memories of the Green Machine. He was a decent player, a guy who always worked hard, was willing to, to put in the extras and go, you know, go beyond and beyond. Uh, above and beyond. Well, I remember him as an under 15. He was playing in the, the back line and in the A side and he said, no, he wanted to play as a loose forward. And being determined, he said, no, I'd rather play Bs if I can't play in the A side, if I can't play in my position. So they dropped him to the B side and he persevered and eventually he came through. And uh, through the ranks, noticed by the coaches, 
and pushed his way into the first side. But I wouldn't say I was a star. I mean, no one ever told me at school that I would be a Springbok or that I would play for the Springboks one day. It was, my ambition was to play for the Sharks. I mean, that was my, my big dream. Um, my dad, obviously, being a, a huge Shark supporter, my grandfather as well. Um, growing up, Henry Honeyball was my absolute hero, and um, that, was, that was probably my ambition, to become, um, to play for Natal and be a Shark, and I didn't think I was good enough to, to make it any further. That was kind of what I thought would be my ultimate. When he left, you know, you deliver, you give a testimonial to a child and uh, you write your comment down. Now, this was my testimonial as just before he left. I said, wow, what a player. Nothing to say except exceptional. The epitome of sportsmanship, ability and class. He is a young man of real class, a special person. Whiteley's path to the top took an unexpected turn after leaving school. I actually went to, to Poch, to, to, um, to the Puck and I really wanted to do graphic design. My sister was a graphic designer and um, I come from an artistic family and I mean that was my, my ambition to kind of study and, and play and it was, it was tough. The first you know four or five months um, was, was quite intense uh, with obviously myself being a bit of a perfectionist and graphic design being very practical and time consuming and the rugby, you know, waking up at five and going to gym and the training. So fortunately, fortunately enough for myself, uh, my parents, after about five, six months, I spoke to my parents and said, look, um, I'm going to have to do one or the other. Um, you know, I just, I just couldn't manage balancing both. And um, they told me, look, you can, you can give it a go. Give it your best shot. And they believed in me. Um, and they said I can go back to the Sharks and Coach Swayze, who's with, with, with the Lions at the moment, um, heard about it and, and, and managed to, to, to squeeze me in there at late notice, about halfway through the year. And, and Ian Ardendorf, who's um, a fond friend of mine and um, one of my best friend's fathers, um, coached Collegians. And I managed to get in there and on a 20 side. And, um, it, was, it was a smooth transition, stayed with my grandparents on the bluff, which was fantastic. Uh, it came to us as a junior Sharks contracted player straight out of uh, Glenwood High School and played for under 20s and he spent two years in the under 20s as an exceptional player and it, it stood out straight away and we were fortunate enough to have him in the first side before he made the move from the Sharks. He was a natural um, and led by example in, in the way he played. Um, he really did understand the game um, a lot and read the situation very well. I played for the Sharks on a 21 side and then played for the Wildebeers as were known um, and then the Sharks 15. I mean I was in the Super Rugby squad, in the Curry Cup squad but I just, I just you know, wasn't good enough to, to crack the nod. I mean they had fantastic players and um, particularly the loose forwards. And Rudolf said, look, there's, um, we're not going to contract you for next year. Um, you can go look for other opportunities. And that's when Dick Muir went, fortunately for myself, he went to the Lions and um, he saw, saw something in me uh, while I was at the Sharks. And yeah, he, he offered me a great opportunity. During a tumultuous time in the Lions' history, Whiteley formed a solid bond with coach Johan Ackermann. Coach Akis, I knew, believed in me as a player. And uh, he was first an assistant coach uh, to John Mitchell. And uh, myself and John also had a, had a good relationship. I mean, he was, a, he was a tough coach, but he was brilliant. Um, you know, he had a, a brilliant rugby mind, really, things outside of the box and, and you know he is tough but he'll, he'll make you a better rugby player and um, I was in and out of the starting lineup um, when he was um, he was head coach and once um, once he left coach kind of brought me in and said look would I would I like to be captain and, and lead the side in the in the Vodacom Cup um, because we were you know we were relegated out of super rugby and they had planned this 
Lions Challenge, which was, we were, geez, we were extremely excited. We were going to travel to America, and it was a, um, a lot of excitement, and then all of a sudden that fell through. And then coach came and he said, look guys, this is a situation. We can have to play Vodacom Cup and we're just going to have to um, you know, fight and give it our all in this competition and then we got promotion and relegation. So we really took that competition seriously. The Lions travelled to Nelsbridge to play the Pumas in the final. Yeah, as Warren Watley in the mid. And Isia has a look for Watley, has to be on well. It will be Anthony Foreman. An impressive player, Warren White. He read the game well, got there very quickly indeed. That'll be it, and the Lions will celebrate. Heartbreak for the Pumas. Hats off to this Lions side, particularly that attack. Warren White, led the charges, fantastic. Tecklenburg was unreal. That was probably when, when everything started, I would say. When, when the vision and the goal um, and our culture really started to, to lay a foundation that... Um, you know, that we're reaping rewards from today. Vodacom Cup victory, the start of a revolution in Lions rugby under Ackerman and Whiteley's leadership with exciting attacking rugby, bringing Curry Cup success. What about the Golden Lions? Perfect season, unbeaten. The side's 2016 Super Rugby campaign saw them earn the respect of many en route to a first appearance in the final, just a few seasons after suffering the agony of relegation. And the captain's over for the Lions' third try. Free kick, Lions! And history is made. For the first time ever, have emerged from FMG Stadium with the W next to the name. And the two W's that matter most are Warren and Whiteley, the captain of this Lions side, who is an inspiration from kick-off to close. The incredible rise under Whiteley's stewardship characterised by a sense of brotherhood and playing the game with a smile on the face. It just happens, I don't even know how to do it. I mean, I guess it's just myself showing what I feel like at that moment, you know. Um, I mean, I love what I do. Um, to me, it's, um, it's such a privilege to be able to do something that you love. Um, I guess that's why I smile, you know. It's, it's just me showing... I feel the time. He's very much the spiritual leader of this Lions team is Warren Whiteley. I think I don't have a particular philosophy. I'm really someone who likes to form relationships with players, likes to get to know, know the guys, um, you know, and just serve the team uh, more than anything. And that's really important for me. And it's just serving the people around me and, and getting to know them and um, small little things, you know, knowing each and every guy's story, um, because we all have all have unique stories. Um, so I mean, that's that's really important for me, and um, I believe that's that's how it started with us um, at the Lions in, in 2014. Um, you know, we were a bunch of players from all, all over the place, all over the country, scattered around, and um, came together with. Um, you know, a particular dream and a vision, and we, we all believed in that. It wasn't easy. I mean, um, we had some stumbling blocks, um, but we kept believing, um, and, we, you know, we've, we're reaping the rewards now in the last two seasons, being more consistent um, within the Super Rugby competition. So, you know, Coach Akis has also played a, a massive role um, in shaping, shaping me as a person, who I am, and, um, he's just been a wonderful example to me um, throughout the years and um, I respect him immensely. Um, he's a wonderful man and um, us as players all just um, really have a lot of respect for him. Um, you know, he's just a, a father figure to us all. Wisely's role in the Lions Revolution undoubtedly playing a massive part in his elevation to higher honours. Coming up after the break, negotiating the step up from the red of the Lions to the green and gold of the Springboks. Welcome back to the fourth installment of the Road Less Travelled series, featuring Warren Whiteley's journey from playing barefoot on the bluff to being named captain of the Springboks. 
Despite representing Natal at Craven Week, Whiteley never managed to dom the green and gold at age group level. However, his speed and athleticism saw him represent the Blitzbox, a short chapter in his life that had a profound effect on his future ambitions. Very close to my heart, a lot of those players and, and the coaching staff were brilliant. And when I joined in the end of 2012, um, Coach Paul True was, was a head coach and also fantastic, tough, um, but a brilliant coach. Um, I made my debut and I enjoyed it so much. The culture that they created and um, just to see the environment and just the intensity that they train at, the commitment of the players and just the professionalism was a, was a huge eye-opener to me um, as a player. And I learned a lot. There's the dive and the referee says a try. And South Africa are on the board first with Warren Whiteley. Obviously we won Las Vegas, which, which was fantastic and it was the first time in my life that I'd ever put on a national jersey of any sort and um, that made it really special for me and um, it really ignited, I would say, belief within myself um, that I, you know, perhaps wanted to be a Springbok and that I, not that I wanted to, that I could. With the fire ignited by his time with the seven side, Whiteley's form for the Lions saw him establish himself as one of the country's premier loose forwards. It was a matter of time until he made his debut for the Springboks with a rather brief cameo in Brisbane. It was definitely a memorable debut. I mean, any debut is memorable. Um, but the circumstances were um, a bit unusual. Um, there was, I was going to go onto the field, I think there was probably about 20 minutes to go and unfortunately we got a yellow card, Brian uh, got a yellow card and of course I couldn't, couldn't go onto the field and I had to wait and only once the 10 minutes um, were over um, I could basically join, join, join the team on the field so I, geez, I, I don't know, maybe I played about 46 seconds, <laughs> I don't know how many seconds, it was literally a kickoff and I think I made about three tackles in three seconds and then the final whistle blew and so it was a, a very short debut but still um, special um, nonetheless and um, yeah definitely the start of um, what I said before you know like a fire within myself that I could just if I keep working hard keep believing in myself I can improve um, and I can get better. Despite missing out on the World Cup in 2015, Whiteley featured in the first squad of the Alistair Kutsia era, beginning with the series at home to Ireland. You know, the first test came off the bench, got some decent time, but it was about 30 minutes. Second test came um, onto the field at half time. Well, Warren Whiteley is coming out with the, the scrum cap on and in jersey number 20, the Springboks under the cot. I scored my first test try um, at Ellis Park, um, which was very special. Whitey, beautiful stepping from Whitey try. All my family were there, uh, friends, family, my wife, my daughter, so it was a very special moment for me. First test try for Warren Whitey. And there was, uh, well, loads to do for Captain Warren Whitey, or Lions Captain Warren Whitey. Good step, good stretch, good score, South Africa right back in it. And then started the the last test, um, um, which, we, which we managed to, to win at the death, um, which was fantastic and we won the series. And we were under a lot of pressure and um, it's, it, it was really memorable, you know, to pull that series back after that loss in Cape Town. In the first match of the Rugby Championship, Whiteley was at it again as he scored a last-minute winner against the Pumas in Nelspreet. Tells you how much the trial means for South Africa. It's special, um, you know, to, to get on the end of a um, of a trial. But I mean, it's it's really what happens before that. You know, I'm just the one dotting it down. So, um, you know, Eben um, did some great work on the blind. We we hit it up twice. Um, I know Yaku got the ball. He did a pick and go. Um, got some momentum for us and. We changed direction, Yevon got the ball, um, drew in some defenders, gave it to Brian, he stepped his way through and offloaded to me. So I didn't do much, I just, I just dotted it down, that's about it. 
following the retirement of Adrian Strauss, the honor of being named the 58th captain of the Springboks was awarded to Whiteley. There are a number of, of, of things that I can mention about Warren, but I think uh, the big thing that stands out for me is Warren's ability to function under pressure. He's uh, a logical thinker and uh, he makes good decisions um, on and off the field. Uh, off the field, I think he's a person that doesn't uh, impose his personality on himself. He's, he's an inclusive person and then, you know, he isn't scared to then make a decision, uh, So, which is really great for, for team cohesion. I think that's uh, the, the key for me is when your leaders run in front, when your leaders are there first. And uh, Warren is, a, is, a, is a really an excellent example of, uh, of leading by, by his deeds and his actions. Jeez, there, was, there wasn't probably a, a specific thought that um, went into my mind. To be honest, with him telling me, you know, do I want a captain of Springboks, he said to me, look, I must um, go home and go chat to my wife and just sit down and relax. So I was, I was probably thinking of telling her and her reaction how excited she would be and which is exactly what happened you know I, um, I headed home obviously with a, a lot of excitement um, and she was the first one that I, that I spoke to she was shame she are she was almost in tears and kind of had to you know make a plan with my daughter because she's you know running around and Trying, I'm trying to get my wife's attention, and obviously when when I get home, she's got no idea I've got this important thing to tell her. So, you know, she's kind of looking after Ava, and we bathing, and so now I'm thinking to myself, okay, how am I gonna? I, I need to think of how, how am I gonna tell her now? I need to sit her down, and so, <clears throat> you know, we put one of Ava's um, favorite favorite programs on, which is called Peppa Pig. She absolutely loves it, and we know, you know, if we need her to to focus a bit, we can kind of. Um, get her to watch that and put that on and then um, just started chatting with my wife and she was, you know, she was ecstatic. Having earned his leadership stripes at the Lions over the past four seasons, Whiteley relishes the tactical aspect of leading a team. I love, I love making decisions on the field. I love being involved um, in the tactics. Um, <clears throat> I mean, that will be spoken about. Um, early on in the week and um, as players um, we all get to play our part um, definitely the final say is, is with the head coach for sure um, but it's great that we that um, that freedom is given to us on the field to be able to make decisions um, on the field I mean that's fantastic so um, I love that that part of the game um, you know some some people might say it's it's high pressure but I, I I love that. I love making decisions on the field. It's, um, you know, it's a lot like like playing chess. You know, it's back and forth. So it is a game at the end of the day that we are playing, and um, that's one part of it I, I really enjoy. He's a Tuchman kind of player, thinking quick on his feet, good skills, an ability to read the game and understand his own players as a captain and the opposition players. Even though results will ultimately determine his legacy as Springbok captain, there can be no doubt of the impression Whiteley has left on those around him. Warren was a normal kid, um, but he was very respectful. Um, he had very good manners. His feet are squarely on the ground. Um, his personality is great. And the time he spends with you, um, he will talk to you and he'll listen to you. He's got a very strong personality, um, he's got a lot of charisma and um, you know people flock towards him and he just led from there. Warren was um, just one of those well-mannered, polite, humble, hard-working young guys. You know, if you asked him to do something on the field, put an extra, in fact you didn't have to ask him, he just led by example. The fact that he's always willing to, to do something for anybody, for, be it for his old school, be it for the club. Um, just a special guy all around and wish him the best of success. For Whiteley, the opportunity to lead the Springboks came as a result of years of hard work and sacrifice. His love for the game has been evident throughout his career and the example he sets for all future stars cannot be understated. 
you just have to believe and keep believing um, in yourself. I mean, that's probably the, um, the biggest thing I struggled with uh, as a young rugby player. I just didn't have that belief um, that I was good enough and that I, um, I could uh, be a professional one day. And once I ignited that within myself, that belief, things started happening. So um, I believe that's where it starts. You know, it's having that belief within yourself and, and, and obviously hard work. I can't tell you. I mean, I've met, um, throughout my career, I've, I've seen a lot of talented players. Um, as a youngster, I've spent a lot of time with, I mean, players far talented than myself. Um, but you have to work hard. You have to put in the extras and you have to go the extra mile. Um, I can guarantee you it's, it's the guys who are willing to do those, those little things. Um, you know, that will reap the rewards later on in their lives. Dedication to perfection has seen Warren Whiteley reap the ultimate reward of leading his country onto the field of battle. His rise to the top is a tale of unwavering commitment and work ethic in the face of much adversity, the hallmark of those who succeed despite taking the road less travelled.